All right, so Chris, let's just start with, for the people who haven't been following the details of the story, what happened? You've been working at Amazon for a few years, getting promoted within the company, and just tell us what unfolded. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was working there 2015 when I started, came in entry level, uh, worked hard, got promoted up to a process assistant, which is an assistant manager. Um, I was in that position for the next four, four and a half years. I opened up two other facilities. Uh, my first building was uh, EWR9, New Jersey. Uh, my second one was BDL2, Connecticut, Windsor, Connecticut. And my last building was JFK, Staten Island. Okay, so then you get to JFK, Staten Island, and what unfolds from there? Well, I came in 2018, the building just opened. Um, it was great at first, you know, um, like a launch of a new building is uh, opportunity for me, myself, to uh, show the company uh, who I am as a supervisor, hopefully move up. And uh, of course, I love working with people, so it was great at first, first uh, two years. I was on a night shift. Only thing uh, was the issue was the commute for me um, from New Jersey to Staten Island, it's very difficult. Yeah, how what was that? And a couple hours, an hour, two hours both ways? Yeah, each about way? two and a half. Okay. Three hours each and so way. Where, did the, where did the trouble that, that the president talked about start? Well, things uh, really took a turn before the pandemic for me. Um, personally, you know, I, I noticed over the years, you know, of course, I lost a lot of good workers um, around me, a lot of hardworking people. But uh, just because there was a system that was designed to churn and burn. And um, I trained a, a lot of upper management. Uh, a lot of people came in entry level. And what Amazon does with their process assistants, they have them shadow the new hires, especially the ones that are going to be management. And, you know, for, for years I'm doing this position, and it only takes two years to become a salary manager. I'm wondering when it's going to be my opportunity. I applied to become a salary manager 50 times. Wow. And only was interviewed twice in five years. So it didn't make uh, any sense to me of, of why somebody that opened up three buildings, trained thousands of their employees, hundreds of their upper management, didn't get the same opportunity uh, of, of other, you know, counterparts. And uh, this was before the pandemic, you know, so mentally, I, physically, I was already checked out. You know, I said I put enough time into this company. Uh, it's really time for me to resign. Um, but it wasn't until COVID-19 came into play and I noticed that, uh, you know, Amazon dropped the ball when it came to protecting its employees. You know, we didn't have any PPE. Uh, we didn't have any uh, cleaning supplies. We didn't have the essential needs that we were delivering as essential workers sure. in the beginning of the pandemic. And I tried to raise the flag well before the virus transitioned from Seattle to New York City. Um, as we were sitting in the cafeterias every day, watching CNN, like everybody else, um, the TVs in the cafeteria is saying, you know, we all need to be six feet apart. We need to be masked up. We really need to be uh, quarantined. And we're watching this while we're sitting shoulder to shoulder in a cafeteria full of 400 people. So I immediately stood up and ran the HR, tried to go through the proper channels to raise the alarm saying, hey, what are we doing about this? You know, I'm a single parent, got kids. A lot of the workers there, a majority of women. Um, a lot of uh, senior citizens work there as well. Um, we do have grandparents at home, things of that, you know. So we wanted to make sure that we were safe. Um, so so I, in the, just to make sure tracking. So in the absence of any organization to represent you, you did what many companies would want their team, their people to do, is to just show up and raise the issue to HR, you know, try to make the case, and then what happens? Yeah, after doing that for uh, a day or two, um, the company was nonchalant about, you know, what we were advocating for at first. Um, so I had to take further action. You know, um, I pretty much told them that I'm not going to work as a supervisor. Instead, I'm going to tell the workers the truth. Um, what happened was I came to work on a Tuesday. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, tested positive. And she texted me this. And she came back to work because she needed to make her money. Sure. And um, she didn't know what to do. Well, actually, can I stop you on that for a second? Sure. Because we're going to get to talking about the union. But one thing that people in business often say is, well, we have a free market. 
where it's competitive. If you didn't want to work at Amazon or she didn't want to work at Amazon, she didn't like their safety policies or something like that, she could go work somewhere else. That's clearly, I think, not how you felt about it. But when people say, hey, it's a free market, you go take another job, what's your response to that? But that doesn't solve anything, you know? It's just like jumping out of, you know, out of one fire into the next. You know, they always say that if you don't like a job, just quit. But there's an overall picture to that, you know? Yeah. We keep quitting our jobs. Uh, the next person that comes in is going to go through the same thing. And these corporations want that. I think you were saying that some of your colleagues learned they got fired by looking at some internal app or something like that. And so, but eventually you got fired, right? And so what happened? Right. So once again, you know, my colleague tested positive. You know, that was it for me. Um, I came back to work. Um, we had a meeting, a daily meeting with our upper management. And then that daily sync meeting, they're telling me as a supervisor not to tell the rest of the employees in the warehouse that somebody was positive. Yeah. They wanted to make sure that it was, you know, business as usual, exact words. And I said, oh, wow, that was it. Um, I couldn't stand with that. So I told every employee from that moment that I came in contact with um, the truth, that we're exposed. Um, by the end of the week, um, they didn't answer to our advocacy about it. Uh, we sat in the cafeteria off the clock every single day for 10 hours a day, going into the general manager's office to tell him, hey, we, we're scared. We're afraid to come to work. What are you guys going to do? We want the building to be closed down for the minimum of the 14-day incubation period in the beginning. That's all we wanted. Uh, we come back to work. Um, we wasn't getting that. So that's when we started to organize the walkout. Um, we spent the weekend doing that. And on that Monday, March 30th, uh, we led a walkout around lunchtime, noon. And um, two hours after that walkout, um, I was terminated over the so phone. Meaning all the folks who worked in that facility together, many of them, maybe not all, all walked out together at lunch? Uh, it was just quite a few. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll just point out, earlier today there was a session about talent here, and we were talking about a company where all the engineers said, we're going to take a day a month for mental health day. I was thinking, well, you know, it's like take lunch for physical health, and it has a very different context. We think of it as a strike or work stoppage or something like that. And so that was the point. Then you get fired, and then, you know, uh, one of the elements you know, that I think followed that closely was that the general counsel of Amazon sent out an email saying that you know, they hoped that you would be the face of trying to organize because they said a lot of you know, unkind things, not smart, not articulate. So then you start this unionization campaign. And by the way, we're going to answer questions, uh, ask, you know, get you guys questions in a minute. But just tell us what happened and what you want now. Like, let's just get up to present day. Yeah. Um, um yeah, at, at that moment when uh, that memo came out, it motivated me to continue to advocate for workers' rights, uh, especially because Jeff Bezos, who was the richest man in the world at that time, uh, was in that meeting and signed off on that. Um, so uh, we spent the year traveling to his mansions and penthouses, uh, protesting in front uh, with Amazon workers, uh, basically saying we're not going to give up. You know, um, We got to a point where there was a union drive in Alabama. Um, we supported it from New York, but we were curious about how they were doing it. Um, we went down there, learned some things, we saw some opportunities. Then we came back to uh, Staten Island, April of 2021, to begin our own independent worker-led union. Why did you want a union? Well, I seen that as a way of workers getting the protections that they need. You know, there's nothing on paper um, that protects workers. You know. Amazon's an at-will company, meaning that they can make up any reason to fire people. That's the system that's designed that we see uh, a term terminates people at a rate of 150% a year. Um, we're talking about 200, 300 people losing their job every week in Staten Island. Um, I just couldn't stand with that. And having a union provide job security, provide higher wages, provide better medical leave options, provides longer uh, uh, breaks if you need it. Uh, it provides things that these workers need in these warehouses just so they can have a better quality of life overall. And so those are the wants. That's what Amazon Labor Union wants now. Because you had this vote where, unlike in Alabama, you know, and for folks who don't know, those votes are certified by the federal government. You know, the, the majority wins. Amazon has since objected, which we could talk about in a minute. But the idea is then you have a worker-controlled organization that isn't part of some big national union. It's your own independent organization. And then the company is forced to negotiate a contract with you. That's the idea? 
Right. Well, they're not really forced, you know. Okay, how does it work? They, they have to, um, out of good faith, they should come to the table to negotiate a contract. You know, the government can uh, intervene and, you know, put an order for them to do that. But usually how it's supposed to go, we won our election fair and square. Um, the workers voted. Now we represent the workers. The company should recognize that we won and come to the table so that we can negotiate the contract with those demands that we're asking for. Now, we don't get everything that we ask for. You know, that's why we call it negotiating. And sure. we just, you know, once again, we deserve more uh, as essential workers. And uh, having the union will give us representation uh, for that. Well, so, you know, and maybe we'll turn to a question in a second, but let me just ask, you know, you're wearing, you're talking about Jeff Bezos, you're wearing the Eat the Rich jacket, and at the same time, you're going to have to have that company on the other side of the negotiating table. And I'm curious if you imagine what it might look like a few years from now, if somebody in this room is an Amazon shareholder or something like that, or an executive at Amazon, what's your guess of how, what, how should it play out in terms of what the relationship is between the company and the Amazon labor union? Well, yeah, you know, number one, I represent myself. You know, I don't represent the workers. You know, the workers democratically decide how this union is formed. That's why it's an independent worker-led union. I'm an interim president, and the workers have a choice. Interim until the workers elect somebody. Is exactly. that what that? Okay, sorry, keep going. Right. So if the workers feel that, you know, I'm doing a good job as their president, they'll vote for it. Yeah. You no, know, if not, um, they have the opportunity to elect one of their members or uh, choose who they like. You know, the thing about, um, you know, the way we organize, the way I talk, the way I dress, the way, you know, who I am as a person, um, it, it's important that we stay true to who we are. You know, I represent the community that we organize in New York City. You know, so for them, work is seeing that it inspires them. Um, we're talking about labor in different platforms. Uh, we're, we're reaching different plateaus. I've been at the White House. Um, Daily Show, White House, testifying Congress. Right. So it's just about breaking barriers, you know. It's a lot of That's why you're here. A lot of stereotypes, you know, out there. And at the end of the day, I'm just. Well, let me be direct then about the stereotype, which not, is not a personal thing, or about the, but the, the stereotype about unions yeah. is, and if you want to raise your hand and ask a question, feel free with somebody to come around with a paddle. The stereotype about unions is, you know, and Amazon said it, this is the greatest threat to the company. You know, Howard Schultz says it's an assault on the company. Mm -hmm. And the view is it'll ruin the company. And so for people who like to shop at Amazon or think it's a good business because it's been built in a certain way, what's your message to those people? Well, number one, we want the people to support the, the workers. You know, once again, these right. are your neighbors. You know, these are, the, these are the people that come from your community. Amazon sets up shop in your community. It reaps the benefits off of your community. Um, and, and it doesn't benefit your community. I mean, your workers, your neighbors, they're going to work. They're getting injured at a high rate. They're being unprotected. They're working throughout the pandemic right now. They're being fired for, uh, by an app, you know, before they even get to work. Um, What's been, that app called, by the way, just so people? A to Z app. A to Z, so the internal employee app. Yeah, you know, there's been stories that people don't even hear about, you know, deaths at these warehouses, you know, shootings, tornadoes, uh, uh, violence. Things like that is what we're trying to uh, pretty much bridge the gap. You know, as a union representative, we want to make sure that the company operates the way it is, makes their money, but we want to make sure that the workers are also taken care of. That's yeah, so, so what I hear you saying is that the whole system has to work, including for the workers. And unfortunately, I think we're ticking down right here on time. Oh, wait, we have it. Can you do your question lightning fast before I get the, the hook? Yeah. Hi, Chris. Dom. Uh, How are you doing? From Forge. Uh, thank you for your, your perspectives. My parents were both part of unions, uh, one was a firefighter, one was a teacher. And I think the biggest criticism around them has been kind of the, the take backs that unions get. It, 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 how, how do you look at that kind yeah. of model? Maybe explain what a take back is. Yeah. Well, I mean, I understand there's, there's some bad unions, represent, you know, uh, there's been bad unions in the past, there's been bad uh, union contracts, things of that nature. But this is why we, did, we chose to go the route we did with forming Meaning be independent and small in the beginning. Absolutely. Because, Sounds like a startup. Yes. Yeah, you know, workers, what's the ultimate power of putting workers in the driver's seat? You know, we know the ins and outs of the company. I knew the ins and outs of Amazon. I was invested into the company. You know, yeah, I you've cited part. some of the management principles, disagree and commit, that kind of thing. Absolutely. You know, I carried those same principles over to my organizing activism. You yeah, know. somebody said to me, you know, are you pro-union? I said, I'm pro-union in the same way I'm pro-restaurant. 
I think they should exist. Some are good, some are bad. And so we're all gonna have to figure this out together. You know, for folks who are interested in exploring this further, you know, Chris has been here the entire time, happy to talk about it. And Chris, I just wanna say, we're learning because you're doing something completely new. And for that example, I feel grateful and I hope we all should be grateful for the learning. So thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.